Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent bringing you episode one of a new Let's Play. We are playing in the spirit of pirate adventure, Sea Dog City of Abandoned Ships. So, this is a Sea Dogs game that previously was Age of Pirates 2, and then bought by a Russian company, I believe, and rebranded as Sea Dogs. Um. There is a new Sea Dogs coming, actually, and if we look here, there's dev diaries and stuff on the uh, store page. So, in anticipation of that, we're playing City of Abandoned Ships. This is a huge pirate game, well over 100 hours of content. Um, that's open world, lots of simulation elements, lots of RPG elements. And uh, it basically uses a system of special from Fallout except it's pirate instead of special or pirates um not sure which but i think it's pirates pirates um it's a very cool game i haven't played a ton of it we're going to be learning it together and playing it together so let's hit play and see what happens <clears throat> excuse me let me get my volume right That's the company that made the game. Seaward.ru This is also a historical based game. So we'll learn some history possibly as well. Strange fanfare there at the end. Not strange, but wasn't expecting it. Nice little skull rotating in the corner. And here we are. So, version 1.3. Let's go ahead and jump into options. Foliage is high quality, see detail. Um, show battle mode. So, let's see. Mouse sensitivity, I want to turn all the way down. I was playing a bit with it and best um, let's see here primary land E is attack mode X drink health elixir one is search body it's kind of a weird F2 to get to your inventory and stuff um, and combat is a bit interesting as well I want to change Um, let's go ahead and use like that button. I want to change Go Berserk to Q and Fire Gun to F. <clears throat> so that should be good. Alright, let's go ahead and click New Game and see what happens. Alright, we get a character selection. This is a character for only an expert player, so we're not even going to really check him out. Peter Blood. Then we've got Jan Stance, character for the businessman in every player. He came to the Caribbean with the notion of making a fortune in trade, having previously served as a mercenary in Europe. In any case, he's not known to shy away from making plasters the dirty way. Plasters are the game currency. 
We're going to be Diego Espinosa, a character for an adventurous player. Where does a man find power in money and, and in might? And where does a man find those? In his knowledge and skill or in the skills of others. A knack for finding the right solutions and a passion for wealth have led our hero on a strange adventure in the Caribbean. Um, there's many different difficulty levels. We're going to play on Sailor to start out. Rate of experience is fine. Auto reload pistols. Um, I want to reload myself. What's a hardcore game? Not enough adrenaline in the game. Want to feel like a real Corsair? Feel the rush of action and consequence. In this mode, you can only make your save game on land in churches. Whatever mistakes you make, you have to live with. How much of a man are you really? Um, we'll play a regular game. Enter profile name. Oh, my mouse has to sit there while I do it. Um, fluent. Dynamic battles or sea battles. The speed and dynam dynamism of sea battles. Do you prefer facts, action, and task juggling or slow tactical? Let's go slow tactical. Let's go standard enemy encounters. The frequency of enemy encounters in the game, particularly as regards ships on the world map. All right, let's go with few encounters then. Um, we're going to be working for Spain. We can pick Dutch. Spain, a great colonial power presiding over the largest share of the New World under constant pressure from other two great powers, England and France, who actively strive to enlarge their own share of the New World. Um, thinking about hardcore game... <clears throat> no. We'll just play it regularly. Okay, let's jump into it. Here's Diego. I'm in control, actually. Just carrying on, Captain. Decided to take a ride on the quarterdeck, Cap. Well, that's good. Enough laying unconscious in your cabin. How are you feeling? Hmm, I think I'm rather healthy. Still, I can't seem to collect my thoughts. What did you call me, Cap? Well, yeah, who else? I guess after that concussion, everything must be mushed around in your head. Concussion? True, my head is spinning. Come on now. When, when the old Cap, the lucky boy Johan Tomtit... Immune as he was to bullets and sabers, was crushed by a mast in that glorious battle where we hit upon a patrol of Frenchmen. You kept your head and took command into your own hands, and you ordered us to clear out. So the team, or what was left of it anyhow, unanimously, unanimously elected you the new cap. But, oh, I think I remember that I ordered a maneuver to strategically distance ourselves from the enemy. That's it, Cap. The sailors fell right in line and started climbing the shrouds to pull off the maneuver. It's lucky that we picked you up at Panama after you came in from Europe. If it weren't for you, well, without a captain, we'd have been feeding the sharks long ago. And you were wounded by a bomb explosion when we were hit broadside during the retreat. Yeah? So what's wrong with me? My hands and feet seem to be in place. Of course they're in place. We don't have a doctor, but the sailor serving as one patched you up as well as he could. Want to check? Yes, I want to check my health. Create your type of hero. Alright, to change the main character's capabilities, you can click on the property and redistribute the points by using the arrow icons. The skills will be recalculated automatically depending upon the chosen general settings in the capabilities menu. I'm here. Pirates. You can close the window by clicking on the skull and crossbones in the top right. Okay. So, can I change my name? No, he's Diego Espinosa. Alright. So we've got power, which is strength, needed to hit hard, throw far, and carry a lot. Influences weight points, carrying ability, and life points. The defining characteristic for skills that takes lots of physical exertion, especially heavy and medium weapons, and general weapon skills. We've got insight, perception, the talent for clear sight and hearing. Without a good eye, the cannonballs will hardly fly in the enemy's direction. Particularly influence the skills accuracy and stealth which we can see down here, and we'll go through them as well. Um, reaction. Agility, hand-eye coordination. An awkward man would get his sword stuck in its scabbard, and the boarding hook would get stuck on the pants of its owner. Required for such skills as light weapons, medium weapons, pistols, and boarding. Affects maximum amount of energy. Authority. Charisma. The sum of a manly wounded physiognomy... 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 
and a nicely balanced tongue. A leader doesn't have to turn to force to gain the goods of a successful trader. He'll give them himself. The best people will follow him, and the most beautiful women will wait for him at every port. Leadership is a required attribute for such skills as authority and trade. Affects the number of joining officers. Talent, intellect, knowledge, wisdom, and the ability to make quick decisions. A smart character won't have trouble quickly reloading a weapon or dropping prices at a store. Using navigational items also requires smarts. Affects the skills trade, cannons, navigation, and especially the rapidity from which a man raises in rank and learns new personal abilities and ship abilities. Which we can see down here. There's a bunch of personal abilities and ship abilities. Endurance. Constitution. Really needed for a hero to survive the difficult plate pirate profession. And it is needed no less by potential clients. Repair and defense are most affected by this capability as is life point gain and weight. And finally, success. Luck. What can we say about luck? If there's luck, we're gentlemen. If not, we'll come to naught. Helps where nothing else will. A bullet will pass you by and an enemy will walk past without noticing you. Effects the skills, pistols, luck, and stealth. So first of all, I want to turn down my endurance a bit and my strength a bit. And let's see. Insight is perception. Let's go ahead and get another point of perception. Agility. Let's get another point of agility. Authority, charisma. Let's get two points of that. Talent, intellect. Let's go ahead and get a point of talent. And that looks pretty good, although I'm afraid strength being so low. So let's at least raise power to four. All right, so I'm not gonna go through all the personal abilities. There's a lot. Or the ship abilities, we don't have them. We have Spanish flag and pirate's pride. Change your flag, your flag to the Jolly Roger. Spanish flag, fly the flag of Spain. Probably Probability of being outed depends on stealth, class, number of ships and squadron, number of enemy ships, and any price on your head. Um, I don't think we have anything else. We have no personal abilities. Although I want to get Curious, so the ability to wear a Curious. That's pretty cool. Alright, so we're rank 1, the level of a character's in-game development. As skill increases, so the rank raises in level. As rank goes up, so too does the character's life, depending on endurance. With a rise in rank, the hero will attract stronger enemies and more sophisticated items. Life points. The character's hardiness, as concerns physical damage. The bigger the character's life, the, the more injury he must take to give it up. Every increase in rank extends the length of his life, dependent on his endurance. Health, the general physical condition of the hero. The worse his health, the more reduced his abilities. Health worsens with further wounds and recovers more quickly if the hero can avoid hand-to-hand -hand combat. Energy, the character's steadiness in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. All attacking motions cost a certain amount of energy. If a character should tire in the course of battle, he will need a breather to recover his strength. A hero's energy limit depends on his level of reaction. Money, everybody loves money. That's why they call it money. <laughs> Doubloons, plasters, tallers. Tailors, guineas, what's the difference? It's all gold. Reputation, an indicator of how others may treat you. Reputation can be high, positive, neutral, or low, negative. You earn repute through your actions, which will affect how others interpret your further actions throughout the game. A hero's renown fades over time and actions disappear from memory. The bad is remembered better, while the good is forgotten. If you just sit idle, then in time your reputation will slide back to regular sailor. Weight, the maximum weight that a character can lug around before he starts to lose mobility. Depends on power and endurance. Title, an honorary title that serves as an indicator of how much good the character has brought to the empire he serves. Next XP, the experience threshold shows your current rank, accumulation of abilities, the skill points you have earned, and how many points remain before your next level. You earn skill points through your actions. For example, every accurate pistol shot racks up points for your firearm skill. In turn, these points are funneled into your overall rank experience and personal abilities or ship abilities, depending on the skills and their linked abilities. Crossing the threshold of a rank or skill moves you up to the next level, level, thereby raising your life and skill points, which you may dole out at will. Personal skills, we've got leadership, six in it. While every person sees that they 
with you that they won't go down in any conflict, they start to believe in you and the taverns start to fill with those that want to join your marches. Enemy ships start to surrender when they see just see your flag. And if your authority is high, your men will board the sea devil himself. Depends on authority and talent. So there you see the um, uh, equation for how to get there. Agility times 0 0.9 plus talent times 0 0.1. Light weapons, ability to use light weapons, mostly rapiers and small sized murder weapons, depends on reaction and insight. Medium weapons, weapons that take not just strength but a certain skill, depends on power and reaction. Heavy weapons, use of heavy broadswords, axes and swords requires quite a lot of physical strength, depends on power and endurance. Pistols, the skill to use high technology devices that can send small leaden balls over a big distance. Demands deafness and a certain luck. Who knows where that bullet will fly? Depends on reaction and success. We have a six in it. Luck. Basically having good fortune. Needed everywhere. Depends on success. Stealth. To sling past an enemy structure, hide from pursuers in the wide open ocean, or set on a clueless enemy like thunder from the clear sky. This is the skill no adventure can go without. Impossible without exceptional success and insight. Then we've got ship skills. Navigation. The ability to bring a ship to port through storm or mist. The skill to read navigational tools and command squadrons. In the hands of a skillful skipper, even the biggest and most terrifying ship will fly like a bird. Depends on insight and talent. A lack of navigational skill leads to penalties in all skills and characteristics of the hero. Shows you what the different classes require. The difference between the current and required level navigational skill will be deducted from the class of the ship. Accuracy, one of the most essential qualities for a wanderer of the boundless sea. A real captain won't waste powder and munitions on all the fish in the neighborhood. Every volley must be straight and to the point, and when the salt air clears the fog of war, the horizon must be clear of any debris. You're useless without good insight and a certain degree of success. Cannons, quick now, ready and position your arms, then before your ears even stop ringing, clean again, pack again, and aim. Don't forget to douse them in water lest they overheat. There's no time for distraction amongst the thunder and flame of mortal battle. Just load up, roll up, and volley. Requires talent and power. Grappling. To position the ship accurately across from the enemy deck, to throw an accurate catwalk on your first try, then to ram the trembling enemy, sweep through the decks like a hurricane, and take the enemy's ship for your much-deserved prize. This all takes quite the knack and experience. Still, the richness of the reward makes up for all the effort. Requires reaction and talent. Defense. As the days roll by, the crew bonds with the ship until the hardened, each hardened sailor is worth ten greenhorns from the tavern. A good captain, therefore, takes pains to protect his men from stupid and pointless death in battle. Endurance and good authority are equally important in mobilizing the crew to defend the ship. Repair. When the enemy is crashing a hail of shells on your ship, turning the deck to sawdust and the sails to rags, when the downpour of the whole cracks and the wind rips the links apart like threads, this is when repair becomes the most important skill. The most important thing here is endurance, but you can't do much without insight either. And trade. The skill of making a killing off something you just bought for a pittance the day before. You need to know how the juicy trade routes, to have an informed grasp of the market, and to hold good relations with store owners. All of that fills the pocket with pleasant weight and a free and frees a man from such trifling concerns as paying his team or a lack of canvas in the stores. Needs talent and the confident authority of a leader. So I am actually going to get um I'm gonna turn down insight one and get another point of authority, I think. So that looks pretty good, because authority is charisma. All right, let's go ahead and hit the skull and crossbow. Good to see you, Captain. Well then, everything's in order, as you can see yourself. But with that last in injury and long downtime, may have affected your skills, and we need a captain who will make us rich. Do you want to practice fencing and stretch your arms a little bit? Yes, thank you. That would be useful. Well, let's start then. I don't know how you fence in Europe, but here our main goal is to stay alive. To do this, you must have a good blade and be able to work it well. There are three attacking strikes, an ordinary strike, a lunge strike, and a crushing strike. There are also three ways to defend, block, parry, and feint, or a deceptive strike. And of course, there's also a pistol to feed an enemy with lead candy from afar. Everything's clear, what's next? 
Any attacking strike will take energy from you, while defending actions won't require any. You can also avoid being struck by leaping backwards into the side, but by doing so, you may take a bullet if the distance is far enough and your opponent isn't a fool. And what's energy? Energy is an index of power a character has left in a fight. All attacking actions take energy from you. In other words, a character will get tired during a fight. In order to regain power, he must take a break. The upper limit of energy depends on the current value of the character's reaction setting. Go on. Try to avoid having a large number of enemies around you during a fight. You'll be cut into pieces. You can combat two at the same time, but three or more opponents will prove too difficult to handle. When your opponent's energy is low, they will use feints and parry. Be careful or you'll lose your head. Go on. If your opponent was deceived by your feint, he'll lose more energy when using a piercing strike. If you're deceived by a parry, you may lose energy, your energy completely. They will break your rhythm and it'll be all over. Go on. Everyone has different weapons. They may be light, of average weight, or heavy. Energy consumption depends on the weight of the weapon. You can fight with a long light blade, but one circular strike with a heavy axe can kill several enemies at once. Go on. Well, let's get in a bit of a practice now, shall we? Let's stretch our legs. We'll have a real fight, but not to the death. Also, you can regain your life power during a fight with elixirs, potions, and rum. But you better save your power for the time being. We'll just practice. Let's do it, and don't beg me for mercy. Alright. Oh. Alright, so pretty simple. What were your orders be, Captain? Fine, well done. I must say, mind you, I was fighting fairly, but your opponents may have their own elixirs. If so, they won't give up easily. Well, let's make it more difficult. Would you like to try two opponents at the same time? Why not? Hey, Hopkins, grab your cutlass and head to the deck. Mm. I'm out of energy. Gotta be careful. Even moving costs energy. I can just stand here and block. Oh, that one hurt. Oh, he's kind of kicking my butt. Got him. Captain. Wow, you you're... and I need to talk. You're one gifted fellow. We're lucky to have chosen you as our captain. One last piece of advice. The more you fence with one type of weapon, the more skillful you'll get at it. So if you want to be an expert with all weapons, rotate them more often. Thanks. We've already arrived at Havana, and now it's up to you to prove how soon we can be sure it was no mistake we staked our lives on you. A few hints before I go ashore? Well then, Cap, you've got to patch up the ship, reinforce the crew, and refill the supplies. And forward en route to adventure. It's better, of course, to get a privateer license. That way, we wouldn't fall foul of the law, even if we were to become pirates. And we could honestly tell our families that our work was legal. And then you could make a decent career and give your name glory. What else should I know? If you want to sell for profit, you need to know the going rates around the, archipela around the archipelago. Archipelago. You can search them out in person by visiting the shops, or you can listen to rumors or ask merchants that you'll meet at sea. Go on. If the ship's cannons become inoperable, they'll have to be replaced. It's also possible to remove some of the cannons to make extra room for cargo. Trading cannons can be a rather profitable sideline. You can buy or sell them at shipyards. Go on. If we do become privateers, know that although ships captured at sea can only be sold for a low price, but honestly bought ships can be sold for a good profit. This all goes on at the shipyard, of course. Go on. It's not worth ruining relations with the smugglers. They bring in a good profit, even if there are some risks. Go on. We need to hire some officers, because we don't got none. If you're not much of a leader, you won't be able to hire many officers. In that case, hire those that can wear two or three hats at once. Three know-it-alls should fill in all our positions well enough. Go on. 
Though stealing is not a seemly activity, it may so happen that you'll have the opportunity to clean out a chest in a house, a bank, or a store. Try to wait until the owner turns his back before you go groping. And remember, if the owner turns around and suddenly notices that his chest is empty, you're in trouble. So clean that chest out as soon as possible. Go on. You may need to head into an enemy city. Don't forget what I'm about to tell you now. The soldiers who guard the gates at the port check everyone entering the city, but they leave their posts at night. So if need be, enter enemy gate cities at night. Then all you have to avoid is getting caught by the patrol. You see, patrol soldiers don't have eyes in the backs of their heads, so they can only see ahead of them and to the side. As soon as you get into a city, head to a tavern and spend the night there. Do everything you need during the day only. While you're in the city, stay away from soldiers. Go on. You can also hoist an enemy flag on your ship if you have one and hope you get lucky. The best way to enter an enemy city safely is to buy a license off the International Trade Company. Nobody will stop you if you've got one, but make sure you're sporting the appropriate flag. You see, it's quite stupid to claim you've got a Spanish license if your flag is British. So this just goes through tips. I could disembark, but go on. You should also know that prisons are located in forts. Don't try to find them inside cities. Thanks, it's time to get to shore. <clears throat> so here we are in Havana. Do, 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 um, where it turns into a third person action game. I am going to save here and call this episode one. Um, I guess there's no way to rename saves. Uh, it doesn't really tell you how much. Uh, playing time 21 minutes <clears throat> but this was just a roll of character and uh, next time we'll explore Havana and see what we can get into it looks like a bustling little port with lots of stuff to do so I hope you'll join me for this adventure it's gonna be a lot of fun I think um, thank you for watching as always and commenting much love peace and joy guys and I'll see you in the next video take care <laughs>